Hey, it's your main man, Sabado. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Um, you know, it's a channel where we talk all things, really retirement, early retirement, um, fire movement, financial independence. And really, I, I think when it really comes down to it is, is living your living your best life. And today we're going to talk about something that I used to do that really helped me um, as I moved along the path. Um, but And this is it's going to take a little bit of a different um, um, approach, but it's it's the same net concept. And, and that's looking at the plus delta of, of a decision. Plus being the positive side of the decision, delta being the negative side of the division uh, of the decision. And I want to talk about that as it relates to my own retirement journey, uh, because I think it's easy to get caught into the to the YouTube fervor around um, re early retirement, financial independence, the fire movement, you know, all of these different concepts and, and, and living your best life and all that. But it, what it really comes down to is understanding both sides of the equation, because at the end of the day, um, whether you retire or not is less of a concern um, than you um living the best life that you can, whether you're retired or not. But before I get into that, I, I do want to share with you a little bit about myself and, and the genesis of this channel. Um, my name is Sabado. I'm a uh, retired human resources professional. I retired at the age of 51, uh, which by most measures is considered early retirement. And um, one of the things that drove me into the career that I was in was the my, my personal mission statement of uplifting the human condition uh, my goal is to somehow leave the world a little bit better um, than I found it and you know I, I'm not here to purport that I'm perfect I'm not saying everything I've done is perfect everything in my life isn't exactly as I would have charted it out to be uh, but I am doing okay I retired at 51 and I'm living a pretty good life and my goal is to and the goal of the channel is really just to give you information to, to in, in hopes that my journey may somehow help you. Um, I, I do realize that um, folks from underprivileged um, and underrepresented communities, such as myself being African-American, you know, we retire at a, at a lower clip. And some of that is due to the fact that uh, we just don't have access to some of the information that, that others might have. And so my goal here is really to bridge that gap to just provide some some real perspective and some real information from a real person um, on the uh, uh, on the topics of, of early retirement and financial independence and and you know and living your best life because I again I recognize not everybody's going to retire at, at fifty one so on that note um, let's get into it so when I took a look one of the things I used to do when I worked is I would take a look at everything that I did and I would look at the positive and I would look at the negative I'd have a meeting. <clears throat> I do a plus delta. What went well? Uh, where do the opportunities sit? And I think, you know, retirement is no different. Um, I retired about a year ago, and it's trust me, it's been great, but it hasn't come without some some complications. But there's also some things that I think each of you are probably going to find um, useful, or that enlighten your uh, path, or just excite you about the op the the prospects of potentially getting out of the workforce and doing what you want to do when you want to do it, or the, the concept of not doing anything at all, because I know a lot of us feel that way as well. So what I'll do, though, is I always like to start on a positive, and um, so I'm going to start with the pluses, and I, I'm going to give you five pluses. Um as I, the number one plus, and again, I'm looking down at my notes um, just so I could stay on task and, and keep things moving in the right direction because anybody that knows me knows I have a long explanation for just about everything, but I want to make sure I get to it so it's you have information that, that you can use. Uh, so number one plus is that I'm on my own schedule. It's funny. I, I think, you know, I'm wearing my t-shirt today. Everybody, um, you're like a Monday because nobody likes you. Ha ha ha. But the, the, idea is when you're working every day you're getting up or you're moving around and doing something at a particular time that uh, under most circumstances you probably just wouldn't do now I do recognize there are some of us out there that absolutely love the the work that we're doing but you know do we love the fact that we're on a schedule do we love the fact that we have to deal with politics do we love the fact that we have to somehow tailor our behavior in order to help somebody else reach their goals? When not always being recognized for your own contribution. You know, these are all things that uh, that happen to all of us. If you disagree, please let me know in the comments. But to some degree, 
these things happen to all of us. And, you know, one of the when you retire, um, you don't have that. You don't have to worry about what other people are thinking. You're on your own schedule. The only time I set an alarm is when I have to do something early in the morning because I don't want to miss it because it's going to be so much fun, like playing golf, going to visit family or going on a trip or taking my RV out somewhere. So, um, you know, I, I don't set an alarm on a daily basis. And if I don't want to do something or something doesn't feel good, guess what? I just don't do it. So the fact that I'm able to be on my own schedule is really plus number one. Uh, number two, um, I'm able to be myself. You know, I, I'll tell you, I, I was an HR person for a lot of years. And human resources is a department that holds that that's a very important department. There's a there's a lot of authority. There's a, there's a little bit of power. Uh, when you're a human resources person, because you're investigating everybody, the CEO screws up, you investigate the CEO. Line employee has a challenge, then you help that line employee. The manager isn't treating the employees well, then I'm the person or my team is the one that handles it. Benefits, payroll, all of these, all the different pieces. And so you have to be a lot of things to a lot of people. And so you take that and you add the layer of being an African American man in a society like. Our society, you know, I'm not saying everybody's racist, but I think we all have uh, different prejudices or preconceived notions. Now, how we act on them is different um, because my friend group is like the United Nations. But there are some people that I've encountered that maybe aren't that inclusive. Um, and so in order to succeed, I had to be cognizant of my behavior Um you know, being six foot eight, when I speak to people, if, if people do something that's uh, not that's out of alignment with the with the values of the organization or the or the, or the then what I have to do is I have to be aware that having a deep voice, being six foot eight, um, stereotypes around African American men being aggressive, all of those things they come into play in every single interaction. And so, a lot of people that don't have that have a hard time understanding the fact that having to do that puts uh, weight on your shoulders. Um, and if you don't believe me, go to any um, uh, executive or manager who's a, you know, a woman and, and ask her how many times she's been perceived a certain way because she was being assertive in her communication or didn't want to put up with somebody's BS. Then it turns back around and it's, I hate to get into the cliches like victim blaming and things like that, but those types of things happen. And so you have to be cognizant of that. And so when I was, when I retired, the beauty of it is I was liberated from all of that. I didn't have to worry what people think. I don't have to worry about the perceptions that people have of me. I don't have to worry about trying to be what I'm supposed to be because, uh, as my, as my wife says to me all the time, and she used to say ever since we uh, met and she'd say, do you? And the thing is, is you have to be yourself. And, and what you find is, is that when you're yourself, then people are going to gravitate towards that because people are looking for people that are just real people. You know, it, it gets me to thinking about this YouTube channel. And, um, you know, as, as the as the channel has grown, and I know as you go back and look at some of the earlier videos, the production wasn't as good, the lighting wasn't as good, the camera wasn't as good, um, the sound wasn't as good. And, you know, you try to improve those things because it's important to me that you have an experience that's useful for you. But, when I look around at other YouTube channels, one of the things they're always talking about is growing your channel to be some kind of super channel and, and how to get to a million subscribers and those types of things. And as it sits right now, I'm at about 240 subscribers. And those 240 subscribers are people that saw something in me that uh, they connect to. And so what that tells me is that when you have a channel that has tens of thousands of views, you have people that... Uh, look at your videos just about every time you put them out that there's people that are just looking for and yearning for real interaction. And so as opposed to being what I thought an HR person had to be when I was working or what an executive had to be when I was working or being a senior manager or representative of the company when I was working, I could just be myself. I could wear shorts and t-shirts every day in the summer. I could dress and, and take a shower if I want to. And if I don't, I don't. Uh, my wife doesn't necessarily like that all the time, so I, I make sure to bathe regularly just for the record. Um, every day, that is. So, uh, just kidding. But anyway, I digress. But the fact is, is you're able to be honest, be yourself, and really kind of call things like you see them. And I think we all uh, have a desire to do that. Um, and I think some of us do it to varying degrees, but it just opened up 
that opportunity for me because I don't I don't have to worry about uh, networking with people and what other people think. And I can really chart my own path and get after it. Uh, number three, I have time to explore my interest. Um, you know, I, 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 there's, I'm one of those people that a lot of things interest me and I don't know what they all are yet. Um, many of you know that I just started playing the piano at the beginning of the year. And so I was able to explore that interest. Um, one of the challenges that I had was because I was no longer in a position of service, when I retired, how am I going to give back and help uplift the human condition? So I went and said, let me start a YouTube channel because it's a forum where people have the opportunity to chime in and listen if, if they're inclined. But it allowed me to do that. Um, it's allowed me to really focus on my gardening. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at is, is getting into a master gardener program so I could really understand some of the science behind gardening because right now, you know, my peppers, my beans, my tomatoes, and my collard greens and everything else, they're all growing great, but uh, sometimes I think it's just luck. So if I knew the science behind it, then I know that I can have a repeatable result every time. But it, but I, I but the, the, the beauty of it is, is that I have the time and the ability to do that um, on a regular basis. Uh, I'm able to, number, number four, I'm able to focus on the people I care about and that care about me. You know, when you... It's funny, when I was working, I realized that in a position like mine, um, there were a lot of people that wanted to connect with me because of the position that I held, because I controlled resources, because I was responsible for purchases in the department. I had a lot of people around me that saw me as somebody that they can get something from. When you retire, you, what you realize is some of those people, you really did build genuine relationships with. Other ones, they go off into the wind. And so the people that care about me and that are concerned about Sabado on a, on a genuine basis, quite frankly, those are the people that I want to be around. And the people that I care about, my family, my friends, I want to be able to put 100% of my time and effort and attention into them and be present uh, when I'm speaking to them or when I'm interacting with them and being able to help them through situations or understanding that it's okay for me to be vulnerable. Most of us we go through work and those of us that uh, we, we say how tough we are and we're X, Y, and Z, one of the things that we have to guard against is being too vulnerable. Not because you care about what other people think, but because people will take advantage of you. And anybody out there that knows that, please chime in because it's it can't just be me. Um, so, But it gives you really the opportunity to, it's given me the opportunity to spend time with, with the people I care about. And, you know, I always make the comment, it's funny, I used to always say that if I care about you enough to answer the question, it'll always be the truth. The challenge is, is when you have too many people asking you questions, then it's difficult to even get back and give an answer. But now I can focus on my family, my friends, and my YouTube family. You're like family to me. I've, I've got people on here that if you sent me a message right now, I'd know exactly who you are, everything we've talked about, and, and how that's impact you know, how some of this stuff has impacted your life. So I think, um, I think it's great. And I, I, I don't have to worry about being overextended because if I'm overextended, then I, I stop, you know, doing something. And then the number five is, you know, I have mental clarity. I, I think about it's, it's just, it's weird. Like I sit down and thoughts just come to me clearly. They come to me one at a time. Um, I'm not, I'm not getting a log jam or a traffic jam of thoughts in my mind when I'm in a conversation because I'm able to be present. And I think that really just comes with having more capacity. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday who has to go to work today and he's, he was telling me how he had to do all of these things in order to get ready for work. And my, in my mind, I started thinking, well, where's the time to think and to reflect and to introspect and to do the things that are necessary for you to just be a good human being and to be who you want to be. And you just don't have that time. And so now I have that time. So my interactions with my wife are just incredibly rich. My interactions with family and friends are, are just, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing and, and you really don't know these things, or at least for me, I didn't know these things to the degree that I know them now or understand them the way that I understand them now, because I didn't have the capacity to take the time to, to really understand. And so now it's just, it's, it's incredible. Um, every day my cup is filled either through doing activities that I like to do or interacting with people that 
uh, that I care about and that, that care about me. So those are the five uh, pros, um, the, the pluses as they were. Um, and so let me, you know, without the pluses, uh, I'm sorry, without, with the pluses have to come the deltas. And so I, you know, I don't want to end on a negative because I will wrap it up and you'll see where I sit on it overall. But, you know, one of the deltas is, you know, all my friends are still working. You know, I have a couple of friends that I've made in retirement and I have one friend that retired early. But for the most part, most of my friends were working, are still working. And so it, it doesn't create loneliness, but it's a little bit isolating and, and more so on my end than theirs. Uh, it's funny. I have a friend of mine who I just pop over to his house from time to time about two or three times a month. And so one day I called him up to say, hey, you know, I was going to stop by. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm working. And I said, oh, yeah, wait, it's only 2.30 in the afternoon. So, you know, it's things like that that come into play or golfing. I Most people can't golf during the week. And so I have a uh, I went golfing with a neighbor of mine last week. And he said, I said, you know, is it just two of us or is it going to be four? He says, well, I set up a four, but everybody else is working. And so it really kind of crystallized the fact that my friends are still working. And a lot of the people that I want to spend time with are still working. So I'm able to do everything I want to do on the weekend and then help my friends fulfill, you know, our needs together on the weekend. So that's that's a little bit of a, of a drag. Uh, number two are just the haters. You know, people... Whenever, whenever you do something that other people want to do and they don't have the ability to do it, you're going to get a group of people that are haters. They're going to be negative. And, and I, again, there's a difference between being negative saying, you know, is, it, is there risk or, or those types of things. But there's, there's other that passive aggressive kind of gaslighting, trying to get you to second guess your decision type of haters. And those are, those are the next level. Those are like next level haters. And, and you, you come across those. Um, there's people that are jealous and, and every time I see them, the first thing they do is they talk about, oh yeah, there's a retired guy. And it's, and there's a difference between somebody saying, Hey, there's Sabado, the retired cat, because I'm Sabado, that retired cat. But there's a difference between that and then people that are condescending and it almost saying, you know, you did it before me and I'm older than you. And that I somehow did something wrong or I did something to them or, or some other way of just passive aggressively trying to make me feel like I've done something wrong when I'm just doing what it is that, that they wanted to do. And trust me, my uh, my modus operandi is never to push anything in anybody's face. I just happen to be available and be around and I enjoy spending time with people. Now, I will say haters don't last long in my circle. Um, I've had some haters. I've had some people do some things that were you know, a little bit out of pocket in that regard. And I usually give people a few chances, but you know, they always say when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. Uh, there's been times when I fought against that because none of us really want to be by ourselves a hundred percent of the time. Some of us do, but most of us don't. So you give people a chance and realize that, well, I wouldn't do that. Why would I, why would you do that? Cause I would never do that. But then my wife again, and my wife is is brilliant. I hope you have the opportunity to meet her sometime. But you know, she always tells me, "Sabado, everybody's not you." And so again, that's that's something that really crystallizes in my mind because sometimes people make comments and jokes just to be funny. Sometimes people do it to be condescending or and and or to be haters. And it's unfortunate because I can't control the fact that somebody else doesn't like the fact that I spent a career and uh, a long time and made sacrifices in order to get to where I am, I can't be mad at that. I mean, I, I, mean, I, can't, I can't change that. And it's not my job to try to change that. And perhaps if they spend less energy trying to be like me or trying to uh, put me down or put others down that they see, then maybe that energy could be used towards getting to uh, the place they want to be. So, you know, but again, that's, that is kind of a drag. Uh, number three, it's what I call situational boredom. There's times where, um, you know, when you're working, you always have something to do because you're getting up at five in the morning, going into work for eight hours, coming home at six, seven at night, and you come home, you're cooking dinner, and then you're getting ready for the next day. And then on the weekend, you're just trying to catch up, you know, everything you lost during the week in terms of time and make up for that lost time. But when you when you retire, what I've experienced, I experience what I call situational boredom. And, it's, and, and trust me, I don't sit around bored. I don't get depressed. I don't get any of those things. But sometimes I'm just thinking, you know, what do I want to do today? And I might have done everything in the week. And it's it's kind of funny. And, and here's how I liken it. Um, 
you know when you get a bonus or a tax refund or you know someone or I guess as like stimulus checks and so you get that check and then you have to pay off all these bills that you accumulated let's say through the year over the last few months you know your credit cards so you get five thousand dollars and you use you know four thousand five hundred of it to pay off bills right and I'm assuming that's five thousand after taxes but you're paying off bills and stuff so you really can't appreciate it and then you get to this point though where you've paid off all of those bills and you have this five thousand dollars that comes in that you don't have to allocate to different places and then you have to figure out what to do with that with that money because you've gotten so accustomed to paying off bills. Well, that's the same. That's how I would characterize situational boredom is when I, the, the day that I retired, I was out of the gate with here, are all the things that I'm going to do all the time. And I'm going to get going. I want to try this. I want to try that. I want to try this. I want to try that. And you, you, you fill your time up almost artificially. Um, it's almost like, um, it's almost like sugar. It's like uh, empty calories because you're, you're just going, going, going. And then you realize, okay, now that the excitement's gone, here are the things that I'm really going to spend my time on. Here's the time that I have to do it. And you realize that the time that it takes to do the stuff you need to do takes significantly less time. So then that leaves you with a lot of downtime. And so you have to really rethink about how does your schedule look or what are some of the things that you want to do or do you have to do everything in one day? So I, like in my example, for me, exam, uh, using myself as an example, it might be, do I need to go grocery shopping, go for my walk and um, record YouTube content all in one day? And so when I retired and early in my retirement, I was trying to do everything in one day because I was like, you know what? I'm a black man in America. I don't know how much time I have left, but the... Um, as, as time has gone on, I started to realize I don't have to do it all uh, in one day. And, that, and, and as I started to spread things out, things started to get a little bit easier. And so anybody that knows me now knows the one thing I tell them is I try to get one thing done a day. So today, for example, was my day to c record YouTube content. So I wanted to make sure I had some information for you while it's still fresh and it's, and it's fresh on my mind. But, uh, but that doesn't mean that when I'm done with this and I'm finished with the editing and all of that, which doesn't, it's, I'm not overly edited, which I try to keep everything organic because it's as real as possible. But it takes me about another hour. Then after that, what am I going to do? Then I have to figure it out. And, you know, I may play some video games. I may um, talk to my wife. I, I may record another video. Who knows? I may go to the grocery store. But you don't have to do it all. But that situational boredom does come into play from time to time because then I'll sit and I won't have anything that I have to do. Um, and sometimes I'm just too busy. There's days that I, my wife might have a doctor's appointment. I might have a doctor's or a dentist appointment. Uh, I'm going to play golf. I've got to get YouTube content out because I've committed to each of you that I was going to get content out uh, several times a week, shorts on, uh, at least Sunday and Wednesday and, um, long form on Saturdays and Wednesdays. And so I have to, I'm, I'll do that. I have to go to the driving range. I'll have, there's, there'll be things that I need to do. And then I end up getting too busy. I end up having a lot of stuff to do wondering, wow, why am I, why am I doing so much? Um, because it's, it's, you know, a lot of us think about uh, retirement as being this time where you just sit back on the couch, do nothing and, 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 and count the ceiling tiles. But the fact of the matter is, is this is the time that you do all of the things that you want to do that you didn't have time for. And once you start to get into it, you start to realize there's a lot of things that I want to do. Um, and, and so I find myself getting too busy with things that I want to take care of because there's, there's still a lot to there's still a lot to do. Uh, it's just it's not that your life stops. You know, retirement isn't the isn't the destination. Retirement is just another stop along the journey. And then it's just. You then go to the stuff that makes you happy and the stuff that fills your cup as opposed to filling other people's cups. Um, and then the last one, uh, last con is productivity pressures. You know, it's funny. I, I think sometimes I, I think about this YouTube channel and I wonder sometimes, is the allure of the channel uh, twofold? Is it because, number one, I'm able to get good information out to, to people that may not have otherwise gotten information or access to information like this from people that look like them, 100%. And 
And then I think about the pressure that I put on myself to get content out and to try to upgrade um, the content. And again, please let me know if, if, you know, those of you that have watched some of my early videos and now are some of the changes making differences? Are, are some of the lighting changes making differences or some of the background changes making differences? Is the sound making a difference for you? Uh, the camera making a difference, you know, let me know if those differences are, are making a difference, but I, I constantly push myself to try to be better. And I try to push myself to give myself time to, uh, to record content and, and to, to bring information and to do the research. And I wonder if that's because I'm putting pressure on myself to be productive. And I, and I think the the verdict on that is it's probably a both end. Um, and I think, I put the pressure on myself because I want to do something right, because I think that because you've taken time out of your life to um, to watch this video, it is incumbent upon me to give you quality information and to give it to you in a way that is uh, factually and aesthetically pleasing, at least to the degree that I can, because what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to this Hollywood level production. I'm not starting a YouTube company where I have designers and all of that stuff. Because again, you start doing that, then you start having other people rely, then it creates a different type of pressure. And I don't like that kind of pressure because I think it takes away from the, the quality and the organicness uh, that you've come to love from your, from your main man, Sabado. So, uh, but again, I, I do put pressure on myself. I want to do things right. My garden is the same thing. And doing the research in the garden to make sure that I have the right vegetables going and I have the right soil composition. Um, and so on. And then, um, you know, trying to make sure that my friends are okay and understanding what's going on with them and then providing input when I could, when I could help them. So there's, there's, so there's the, the idea of, and I, so I think, you know, part of it is, um, you know, wanting to do a good job, but part of it is cause I'm just used to getting things done. And so I, you know, and so the, the, the question becomes, do I stop getting things done? I, I don't know that that's part of my makeup, but, um, you know, as long as I'm getting things done that I want to get done and I've identified those, then I think it's good because the fact that, um, you know, I get the comments that I do, the fact that um, you take time to, to watch these videos, um, the fact that, you know, I go back to my original introduction video to now and I, I see improvement and uh, I actually like watching my videos now because I think I could see all the steps that I've gone through to get to uh, from A to C. And I, cause I still got a long way to go to Z. So that's why I said C, um, but it's, it's those productivity pressures. So, so again, now, so, so I just gave you five pluses and five deltas from reti my retirement life. And, you know, so the question is, I think underlying is, you know, would you change it or do you wish, or do you regret that you retired? And the answer is, um, as Reverend Bullwinkle said, Hell to the now, to the now, now, no. Hell to the now. So there is no way that I would go back to that life of uh, going back, going into the office, going into the grind, listening to somebody else um, tell me how to do stuff that I know how to do, um, having the pressure of performing, even though I may have outperformed others. Um, you know, just dealing with with having to get up at five o'clock in the morning to do something that is it meet my goals? Does that mean I may never work again? If I do, it may be for something that fills my cup. If somebody's looking for a seat, uh, a board member, I, I might do something like that. If I go in and do some human resources consulting and help people with uh, employee related challenges or helping employees with that, I may do something like that. And at some point that may be the, um, another YouTube channel that I set up, but I, as it sits right now, I just, I love what I'm doing. Um, I, I love the life that I have. I feel incredibly fortunate. Um, I, and I, and I, I feel incredibly fortunate that I have you out there, um, the viewers, um, watching what I'm doing. So there, there's nothing, um, there's nothing that I would want to change, uh, because of any part of the circumstance. I, I think it's an incredible circumstance. I feel, I, I feel, uh, lucky, um, you know, I want to get deeper into, into some topics. I have some exciting topics coming up here in the next, uh, next couple of weeks that, uh, that I'm really excited about bringing you. And so the answer is an unequivocal. No, uh, the deltas, 
do not out, outweigh the pros by any stretch of the imagination. If I had a chance to do it all over again, there's some things I may have done a little bit differently, but I would have, I'd do them all with the goal of getting to where I am right now because everything in my circle right now is, is incredible. Even imperfect stuff is still incredible. So that's, uh, that's about all I had. So again, um, you know, I, I do want to stress that if, uh, you know, share this channel with your friends. Um, you know, I, I come out with content, uh, every, there, there, uh, every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, and that's long form content. And I try to get shorts out fairly regularly, but I, on Sundays, I get out a little piece of, of, uh, you know, what I call constructive inspiration. So, you know, something uh, that you can do um, to help move yourself forward to the life that you want to live. And um, on Wednesday, I, I try to do the same thing, just a little, you know, burst of burst of information and inspiration for you. But again, the idea here is that when I was growing up, I didn't have a bunch of people that looked like me um, around me uh, telling me. Uh, a lot of this information. And so I had to learn a lot of it. You know, my parents did a little bit, but I really had to learn a lot of it on my own and through other people that I know and, and books that I've gotten. And in fact, I was talking to a subscriber over the weekend and she mentioned to me that the book that I recommended to her, which is the nine steps to financial freedom, uh, are helping her ask some of the right questions. So now she's, she's opened up a Roth IRA. She's, um, Going, but she's she's talking about uh, attorneys about getting a trust and establishing a trust. Um, she's looking at life insurance. So there's all of these things that are happening, uh, not because I told her to do them, because she, but because now she knew that uh, she was uh, that those things are available. So so again, I, I continue to try to do that. If there's stuff that is important for you or things that you would like to hear in the channel, um, or like have discussed, let me know in the comments and, and also let me know where you're from. You know, it's always great to know that, um, where people are from. I, I, I always had this thing that I feel like, you know, I'm the small YouTube channel and, um, you know, I'm, I'm a small YouTube channel and nobody's listening and, and none of it's really significant. And then I get a message from somebody from the UK, or I get a message from somebody from Florida, or I get messages from people from Texas. And I'm just like, wow, there's people all around the country that are, that are listening to me. And, uh, so, you know, so again, consider uh, sharing and subscribing to the channel. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, we'll continue to grow, we'll continue to bring content and I'll continue to try to, you know, to upscale the channel. So, so I'm better to look at just kidding. And, uh, but on that note, uh, I think we're good for now. So, you know, have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.